So this is the only AC Cobra that was delivered brand new to Canada and the only AC Cobra that spent its entire life in Canada. This car is obviously a little bit more near and dear to our hearts being in Toronto. Nowadays almost every car guy knows the story of Carroll Shelby. A chicken farmer turned race car driver and quickly becomes a very successful race car driver, winning at the highest level, winning Le Mans. But his heart is getting worse and worse over time to the point where he has to retire. So what does he do? He does the next best thing. He goes out and he builds himself a race car. Shelby's been to Le Mans and he's raced in Europe. He knows what it takes to beat the big boys. And he knows that he's not gonna go and develop an engine, develop a chassis, develop a body. He knows from his time in Europe that he can't do this from scratch. Shelby didn't see anything that he liked in North America, so he had to go across the pond to AC Cars to get the chassis and the platform that he wanted to start with as a race car. But unbeknownst to him, AC Cars was losing their engine supplier as they were having the conversation. Bristol Aeroplane was going out of business and they needed an engine supplier. Turns out, Shelby was solving their problem for them. He wanted to take the new lightweight V8 Ford engine and stick it in the ultra lightweight AC car. You guys will notice that I said AC Cobra instead of Shelby Cobra. It's because this is a COX car. So the cars that were built for the USA were CSX, standing for Shelby Export. As Carroll was selling more and more of these cars and winning more and more races, this garnered a lot more media attention, opening up the British and European market. That's where these cars come in. There was no point in taking a car from England, bringing it to the US, shipping it back to England only to be sold a mile down the street of where the car was built. That didn't make any sense. Shelby was super busy with his race program and doing everything in the US, so he did up a contract with AC Cars for them to build these AC Cobras and sell them over in Europe. The cars were, for all intents and purposes, the same. They had the same 289, the same Borg Warner 4 speed, but they just didn't make the trip over to the US and then back to Europe. So this car here is a COX car, it stands for Cobra Export, the left-hand drive version. These cars went anywhere outside of Britain. Now AC was also building COB cars, stands for Cobra Britain. Those are the right-hand drive cars, and those cars were sold all over the UK. One of the giveaways for a COX or COB car, obviously other than the serial number, is the badging at the back. Having done the deal with Shelby, AC had a little bit more free reign for branding. They decided for their European and British models to stick the AC badge on the trunk lid. It's funny, most of us really probably have the American or North American version of the story, but I'm sure the story was a little bit different in England. I'm sure in England's eyes and in AC's eyes, they weren't merely a subcontractor of Shelby and they wanted them to know. AC kept as much branding on these cars as they could. On the steering wheel, on the pedals, on the knockoffs, on the trunk lift, they wanted to keep their name in the game, and rightfully so. This thing was a winning car. You've got to appreciate how rare these cars are. Of the cars that never went over to the US and stayed in England, the COB and the COX cars, there were 62 of them. 45 of them were COB cars, right-hand drives for the UK market leaving 17 COX cars, left-hand drive cars like this one, for the rest of the world. So other than the badging on the trunk lid, the obvious way to tell that this was a COX car was simply just to look at the tag. So if you look down here at the tag, you obviously see the COX stamped in there, and it's a 6,000 car, not a 2,000 car. So it's funny, a lot of people think of Cobras as a monolith. They think of just the Shelby Cobra, or car guys think of a 289 and a 427 but there was actually so many of these cars. There were the early 260 cars. There were the 289 Dragon Snakes, 427 Dragon Snakes, comp cars, 289 comp cars, semi-comp cars, Daytona Coupes, coil cars, leaf spring cars, worm and sector cars, rack and pinion cars. There were so many different little changes and variations in these cars that people don't tend to appreciate how many iterations they went through. So there were actually two iterations of COX and COB cars. This car obviously being the early car. So when Shelby decided that they needed to go to the big 427 to catch up to the gains that Corvette and the Grand Sport had made in the racing world, it was a no-brainer for the American market. Big old flares in a 427 made absolute sense. 
But the guys at AC, they weren't so sure. They had a decision to make now. They were trying to sell to the British and the European market. Gas was a whole ton more expensive there, and they weren't sure that the European market really wanted that big 427 engine. So for the second iteration of the COB and COX cars, they decided to go with the coil car and adopt the new look with the wider flares, but they decided they were gonna keep the small block for the European and British market. So when we heard that there was a Cobra in our backyard downtown Toronto, we had to go see the car right away. It was delivered new to Cambridge Motors in Montreal, sold to the first owner, who we don't know who it was, but then it was quickly turned over in 1969 to the fellow in Toronto who had it for all of these years. So we went down and visited the son of the fellow who bought it in 69. He was selling the car. The car was sitting in an underground parking garage downtown Toronto, 20 minutes from the shop here, and we managed to do a deal with him. The beautiful thing about this car is it's always been a street car. The car was never hot rotted and raced. The car has the original body, original chassis, original engine, original drivetrain. Beautiful, beautiful car. So at some point the owner had a roll bar installed in it as so many Cobras did. So during the restoration we took that out and restored it back to its original configuration. Apart from these cars looking so good, they've got to be darn near the top of the list as far as fun cars to drive. 270 some odd horsepower, right around 2300 pounds, that's tough to beat for fun. So do you need a car like this? No, no one needs an AC Cobra. But do you want a car like this? Of course, everyone wants a car like this. But if you're a Cobra enthusiast that doesn't live in the United States, cars like this should hold a special place in your heart. They're ultra rare, built specifically for the non-American market. Such a good looking car with I think a whole ton of potential future upside. Yeah. You want a car just like this one.